The Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on a rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while, and when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Welcome to the summer sermon series that our Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada is providing for congregations. I'm Larry Kokendorfer, and I serve as the Bishop of the Synod of Alberta and the Territories. It's great to be with you this Sunday and to be able to give your dear pastor or deacon and lay leaders some much welcomed relief. Our rostered and lay leaders offer an incredible ministry, but it's hard work and we need to do everything we can to give them our encouragement and our support. In the spirit of respect, reciprocity, and truth, I honor and acknowledge that I live and work and pray on traditional and ancestral territory of the many First Nations, Métis and Inuit, whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries. I'm speaking to you today from Treaty 6 territory, and Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3 in Edmonton. I invite you to hold a moment of reflection for the ground under your feet where you are today, giving thanks for the people who have come before us and in a spirit of care for this land on behalf of future generations. Let us pray. Into your hands, Almighty God, we place ourselves, our minds to know you, our hearts to love you, our wills to serve you, for we are yours. Into your hands, incarnate Savior, we place ourselves. Receive us and draw us after you, that we may follow your steps. Abide in us and enliven us by the power of your indwelling. Into your hands, O hovering hovering spirit, we place ourselves. Take us and fashion us after your image. Let your comfort strengthen, your grace renew, and your fire cleanse us, soul and body, in life and in death, in this world of shadows and in your changeless world of light eternal, now and forever. Amen. The temptation for any preacher this morning is to jump right into the gospel lesson and to begin plowing through the land in which the farmer's seed fell. 
digging up the soil that is similar between our lives and the path, the rocky ground, the thorns, and the good soil. Often we preachers have focused exclusively on the four types of terrain Jesus describes. And so within our ministries and together with other leaders, we've thought about and worried over the hardened, rocky, thorny ground. We've agonized over how to cultivate more fertile soil. We've analyzed and quantified, assessed and judged. We've evaluated ministry plans and strategies, bought special pots, invested in high-end fertilizers and weed killers. We've counted, sorted, and planted seeds with exquisite care, placing each bit of God's good news in its optimal place to guarantee an impressive harvest. So let's jump right into today's gospel reading and begin to till the soil. I wondered this week if there was more to this parable, something worth plowing up and tilling, something worth taking another look at, something surprising. And two things jumped out at me almost immediately. The word listen and the action of the sower in casting the seed. The Gospel writer tells us that there were so many people beside the sea that day that Jesus had to enter a boat where he sat down, the posture of a teacher in the ancient world, while the great crowd stood on the beach. And before Jesus shares the parable of the sower and the seed, he speaks one word to the crowd, listen. Listen, not because people were talking and he wanted them to be quiet, but listen because something important was going to be said. Listen. It's a word meant to awaken our ears today too, a word meant to jolt us out of whatever else we're doing, whatever else we're thinking about or worrying about, and get us to pay attention. Listen. Something important, valuable, needed, surprising is coming, and you don't want to miss it. Listen. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, well, you know the story. Some of the seed fell on the path where it quickly became food for the birds. Other seed fell among the rocks, the stones, the pebbles, and their growth was quickly scorched by the sun. And seed fell where thorns grew, and their growth was deliberately choked out by the thorns. And some of the seed fell on good soil and brought forth grain, an amazing amount of grain, an abundant crop. Let anyone with ears listen. And there's that little word again, listen. Listen, for there is something important, valuable, needed, surprising here, and you don't want to miss it. Once Jesus has my attention this morning, once I'm listening for something I don't want to miss, I'm drawn to the work of the sower. But there really isn't anything new here. Farmers sow seed all the time, right? And anyone who knows anything at all about what a plant needs to grow wouldn't be surprised to hear that the seed cast in the middle of a path or on the rocks or among thorn doesn't grow. No, it's not surprising that most of the seed didn't grow. But listen, what is surprising is that the farmer chose to sow the seed there, chose to cast the seed where a path meandered through and rocks were in abundance and thorns were thick as thieves. Listen, the wise farmer makes sure to entrust the precious seed to the best of soil dark and black, rich with moisture and possibility, tilled and ready for the seed. Even the farmers of Jesus' day who cast the seed over the land did so on land prepared for the seed, prepared for growth, rocks removed, thorns dug out. But this farmer tosses the seed about here and there, 
as though the seed were available in unlimited supply. Listen. The only conclusion that I can come to this morning is that this is a crazy farmer. Who just scatters the seed? Who just tosses seed around, apparently oblivious to where it will land? Who just grabs a handful of seed and flings it here and there? Listen. God, a farmer, a sower who is extravagant, reckless, perhaps even wasteful in desire and intent. God, who casts the seed of the word of grace, of forgiveness, of reconciliation, a promise of life. God, who casts the seed everywhere, in every place, in every life, in every community. God, who casts the seed, listen for you, for me extravagant grace for you, forgiveness for you, reconciliation for you, promise for you, life for you. This sower, this farmer, God, who we know best in Jesus Christ and in his extravagant, reckless life and death and life for us. We know this extravagant, reckless, wasteful truth about God, not only here, but in many of the other parables. Remember that crazy shepherd who risked the life of 99 sheep to search for one lost sheep until it was found? Or the son who demanded his inheritance, which he blew in a far off place, and the father in the story who simply gave his son the inheritance and who runs out to meet him with joy when he returns. Or the Samaritan, who gave all that they had to bandage the wounds of the one lying in the ditch. What are these parables, if not parables of extravagance, recklessness, and waste? What are they if they are not stories about a God the God we know in Jesus Christ, who is extravagant, reckless, and yes, and yes, wasteful in God's desire and intent to be in relationship with us. This is the God we worship, one who casts the seed everywhere, in every place, in every life, in every community, but the story is not finished. Listen. This one we worship calls us to a life of extravagance, to recklessness for the gospel, to wastefulness where there is no sign or evidence of hope or of life. Listen, we are called to follow this living in our daily ministries, at work and home in our neighborhood and faith community, riding the bus, caring for a neighbor, serving sandwiches for the homeless, listening to a friend, providing hospitality, following this one, this sower, who tosses the seed here and there, who seems unconcerned about where it will land, who seems unconcerned if the seed which is thrown is eaten by birds or withers among the rocks or is choked by the thorns or grows in the good soil. Deborah Thomas, in her book, Into the Mess and Other Jesus Stories, Reflections on the Life of Christ, writes, How I wish we were known for being like the sower, going out in joy, scattering seed before and behind us in the widest arcs our arms can make. How I wish the world could laugh at our lavishness instead of recoiling from our stinginess. How I wish in the people in our lives, the people in our lives could see a quiet, gentle, gentle confidence in us when we tend to the hard, rocky, thorny places in our communities, instead of finding us abrasive, judgmental, exacting, and insular. How I wish seeds of love, mercy, justice, 
humility, honor, and truthfulness would fall through our fingers in such appalling quantities that even the birds, the rocks, the thorns, and the shallow, sun-scorched corners of the world would burst into colorful, riotous life. In a world overshadowed by sickness, scarcity, anxiety, suffering, and loss, what does the world need more than a sower who is lavish? A sower who errs on the side of wastefulness. A sower who would rather lose a bunch of seeds to inhospitable terrain than withhold a single one. A sower who calls us to sow joyfully, lavishly, recklessly, seeds of justice, peace, grace, forgiveness, reconciliation, promise on the path, among the thorn, thorns, among the rocks, and in the good soil. God, a sower who casts the seed everywhere for the love of the world. This is something worth plowing up and tilling, something worth taking another look at. Let everyone with ears listen. Let us pray. Come to us, risen Lord Jesus, and grant us faith enough to share the good news. Send us filled with the breath of your Holy Spirit to breathe peace into fearful lives, to love one another as we've been loved, to welcome the stranger and make friends of enemies, to forgive the sins that bind others to the past, to serve on bended knee all in need of care, to be your wounded and risen body in the world, and to enter with joy God's inbreaking, startling future. Amen.